Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we'll build upon the, the application or the microservice that we started building in the last video and add a database backing to it. So we had built an application called Catalog Service. It didn't have any functionality, it was just a web application. So now in this episode, we'll add a database to it and create entities and repositories out of it and expose them as RESTful web services. So the objective of, the, of this session is to expose as RESTful web services the repositories inside catalog service. We have a few entities identified. In a typical catalog, you would see entities like a catalog, categories, products, SKUs, and some related entities. So we've figured those out. And now we'll go back to our build out Gradle to include the necessary dependencies. We decided that we will use MongoDB as our backend to the system. So our database is a NoSQL database, which is MongoDB in this case. To include MongoDB into the or the repository layer for MongoDB into the Spring Boot application that we built, we'll include this new dependency, Spring Boot Starter Data MongoDB. So that dependency will include the persistence layer, uh, the repository layer for MongoDB into our Spring Boot application. What else do we have to do? We go to our catalog server, which is our main class, uh, the class with the main method. Uh, we enable Mongo repositories in this application which means we are exposing these entities as repositories. Where are these repositories located? They're located in the package given here. Let's look at the repositories. For each of those entities that we want to expose, we create interfaces called repositories, which extend Mongo repository corresponding to the entity that we want to expose. We don't add any special methods here. We could potentially add uh, specialized search methods, declare such methods here, and use uh, queries on that. But for now, we'll keep it simple. We'll just extend the Mongo repository for each of those entities that we want to expose. So this is the catalog repository, which extends Mongo repository for catalog. This is the category repository, which extends Mongo repository for category. The string is the identifier. Let's have a look at the entities that we are trying to expose. Catalog. It is annotated with a document annotation, which comes from Spring Data MongoDB, so which identifies it as an entity. It has got a unique identifier which is mandatory for Mongo. So we annotate this with the ID annotation. The other rate data is an annotation from the Lombok library. This is basically a library which will give you getters and setters, generate getters and setters for each of your properties without you having to code them by hand. So I don't worry about that. So that's that's just a library. You can look it up on the internet. Lombok is a library which will generate you getters and setters for all your properties and you can customize them as well. <coughs> Similarly which, with other entities, you have the category entity. This is again annotated with document and it's got an ID as well and several other properties. DB refs are references to other entities, so in this case, the category refers to a catalog. Uh, we have references to parent categories and several other entities. So 
the entity relationship model has been laid down and uh, we have these many entities to start with and the corresponding repositories to expose them. Now, how do we configure the connection to our Mongo database? So, inside your catalog server, you'll see that we've added one new line, that is, you specify where the configuration for our service lies, or our Spring Boot application lies. So, it's in a file called catalog-service. Where is this file? It, is, it resides in the resources folder and it is uh, written in the form of a YAML file although you could write it as properties file too wherein it would be key value pairs whereas YAML follows a different uh, format. So this is a YAML file. If had it been a properties file all these would be properties like spring.application.name is equal to catalog server spring.data.rest.basepath is equal to slash catalog. This is more of a hierarchical structure uh, representation of the same property file. So this is the YAML file to configure your Spring Boot application. What have, you, what have we got here? We got uh, the application name which is not very relevant here. Then we have uh, configuration related to Spring Data Rest. That's the next segment that I'm going to talk about. But why this is of concern now is Spring Data MongoDB. We specify the connection parameters, the database name to use, and also tell the system that we want the repositories to be enabled. So we have the host name, the port, and the database to use. So in this case, I've given an argument, an environment variable, and if it's not present, it will use localhost. Again, another environment variable to the, for the port, and if not, the default port of MongoDB, which is 27017. So this is the configuration that the configuration change that we made to accommodate MongoDB into this application. Uh, the other change that I've made here, which is not very relevant now, but still, uh, the last time when we ran this application, it was running on port 8080. The Tomcat server was running on port 8080, HTTP port 8080. I've changed it to 3333 so that it doesn't conflict with other services that we build in the future. So these are primarily the changes that we made. So that exposed, so what we've done so far is created some entities, exposed them as repositories, but they are still not web services. They are still not RESTful web services. How do we make them RESTful web services? So that is when your builder Gradle's new dependency comes into picture. The Spring Boot Starter Data Rest. This dependency will have a configuration which will help you to expose all your repositories as RESTful web services, which allow you all the crude operations on your repositories and your entities. You will have, <coughs> by default, you will have uh, RESTful web services which expose JSON data payloads on the repository contents, of the repository contents. So you add this dependency, new dependency, Spring Boot Starter Data Rest. And then, an optional configuration is to configure the base path in which the uh, the RESTful web services will be available. So uh, if you don't specify this, it will be available at the root context, which is just slash. But here I've chosen to use slash catalog. So all your RESTful web services will be exposed under slash catalog. The data REST services will be exposed under slash catalog. <laughs> So these are all the changes that are required to connect your application or to back your application by a Mongo database. So let's now build this application and run it. So before we go into building and running the application, we'll run a MongoDB server. So I created a folder to store the data and then I run MongoDB at that part. So MongoDB hyphen hyphen DB 
path is equal to that. So it will run MongoDB with the base path as this current folder. So we have MongoDB app running and it's listening for connections on port 2017. Now we go ahead and build this application. So we built it successfully. Now, as we discussed in the last episode, we use Gradle Bootrun to run the Spring Boot application. So the Spring application is getting started. As you see, there are a lot more new log statements coming up. So let's just take a quick look at what, what has been logged. The last time when we ran this application, we only had the error page map. So any, any URL that you try to hit, you would land in the error page. Now we have a lot more different URLs getting mapped to controllers. Say for example, you see the base path catalog slash repository. The different methods, HTTP methods are getting mapped to different controllers. <coughs> Options head get post and all that. So catalog slash repository is being mapped. Catalog slash repository slash ID is being mapped. So this is all to allow for the different crude operations on each of those repositories. Some search methods being exposed. Yeah, so notice also that our HTTP port changed from 8080 to 3333. So let's go ahead and try the application now. So we have a blank database. Remember that all our code is available in GitHub at this repository. Okay, so now we go to localhost 3333. What do we have on the root context root? We still don't have anything on the root context. So we go to slash catalog. Here is where the magic of Spring Data Rest kicks in. So it uses the ads model for defining repositories and entities. Uh, so it lists down basically the different kind of entities that are available and the links to them. So we can choose to use any one of them. Say for example, we'll look at catalogs. Let's get rid of this argument. So catalogs. There are no catalogs that we created so far, so it gives an empty list. And it gives the relationships. So all the links to different attributes of the catalog <coughs> are provided here. So Alps is a specification for uh, explaining our it's a semantics forward for uh, describing repositories so you can read more about the ALP specification here uh, let's delve into that later but so our, our repositories are now exposed in the form of RESTful web services you could go ahead and try adding new uh, entities. So let's go use Postman to create new entities. So Postman as a HTTP client, you can use it to test web services, usually as for web services. So we have our services exposed, sorry, not 8080, remember it's 3333, catalog slash products. So let's do a get request so you get the same response as we saw earlier. Now, let's do a post. 
say let's do it on skew or rather let's do it again and skew let's skew skews let's do it again and skew yeah again we don't have anything we do a pose and we choose application slash json with an empty body I'm not providing any FD input parameters, nothing, uh, no properties mandatory. So <coughs> I'm creating a new SKU here. Send it, and a new SKU is created for me. So as you can see, most of the properties are all of the properties are null, but there is an ID generated. So you can see it from the links to the self that there is a new ID generated. So if I can click through to that and get the details of that skip so this this new entity has been persisted in our database let's go ahead and verify that let's open up mongo client let's use the database that was used by the application now let's <coughs> Go to SKU and find all of the entities that we have there. So you can see that there is one entity there with the ID which ends in A to C D, which is the entity that we looked up here. So we did our first post operation to our uh, repository. We created a new entity using the RESTful web service that was exposed by Spring Data Rest. So we have a functional application right now. So we have created a new service. Our catalog service is taking its shape. We have some RESTful web services exposed, which allows us to create new catalogs, new categories, new products, new SKUs. We don't have a UI to do all that yet, but that's way further down the line that we build a UI once all this individual microservices take shape and they connect to each other successfully and they work in town let's start thinking about the UI to it but for now this is one service that is exposed so that concludes this episode of building an e-commerce application with microservices architecture so Stay tuned for the next video where we'll build more functionality into this microservice and eventually port them, make them run in containers. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.